Hi everyone, it's Carol from Crinkle Path Journals and I'm back with some Thrifted Treasures. Thrifted Treasures are hosted by Dale from Not Too Shabby Chic. And I got to go back to my favorite thrift store. It is back open in our town and I have some fun goodies today. So I hope you'll stick around and watch. Welcome here. If you're returning, thank you for coming back and watching again. And if you're new, welcome. And I hope you'll find something you like to watch and will stick around and subscribe. Thanks. My thrift store closed back in the spring, early spring of 2023. And recently they reopened in the same location. They've been getting ready, repainting, they got new shelves from a Bed Bath & Beyond that closed, and it looks fabulous in there. They've implemented a new policy where items on the shelf reduce by 25% each week. That's a fabulous savings, and it means that they're going to be moving over fresh inventory on a more regular basis, which will be so nice. I love their pricing anyway, and then with the discounts, it's going to be incredible. I got my first ever Animal Rummy game. I have had people send me a card here or there, and I just think these are the cutest things. And I don't know, they, they kind of give me a 60s or 70s vibe, but it doesn't have a date on them. But we have Bouncy Bear, Kooky Kangaroo... Entertaining Elephant, Hoppy Hippo, Tuffy Tiger, Frisky Fox, Zippy Zebra, Loopy Lion, Merry Monkey, Cautious Camel, <laughs> and Auntie Alligator. I think they're so cute. Next, I got this postcard book of 30 black and white historical photos from San Francisco. This is a picture of the Cliff House, which is a famous restaurant. And they are in here perforated. Let's see what this says. It says the photographs are from 1886. Oh, from the mid-1800s to 1936 is the span of the history of the photos. So I'll just flip through them quick. Whoa. <laughs> After the earthquake, the starting of the Golden Gate Bridge, <laughs> I have my granddogs with me and their dad is outside working on a car with my husband. And so if you hear a little sad, whimpering puppy, it's just because he can't decide if he wants to be outside in the rain or inside with Nana. <laughs> and when he goes out, he's not happy about being out in the rain and he wants back in. And when he's inside, he hears his dad and he wants to go outside. <laughs> So that's our, that's our puppy, our grand dog. These are great. Looks like a lot of pictures from the building of the Golden Gate Bridge and the earthquakes. Wow. Freeway system going in 
And there's people walking on there to walk over the bridge. Pretty cool. Oh, that's the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. And that was the opening day and they let people walk on the shoulder over it. I didn't think it looked like the Golden Gate. <laughs> and there's Ocean Beach. Looks like they had an amusement park there before. It's not there anymore. Sorry, I have ink all over my fingers from an earlier project. They do still have the windmill. And there's a tulip garden there, which is really cool. So that's fun. Then I got this little golden book that I don't have. Um, there are so many little golden books that were published over the years. Um millions and I still come across some I don't have and I do have a list and Sierra from Coolie Craft Creations was asking me if I could share the list. I use the Libib app L-I-B-I-B -I -B, which is a free phone app for if you want to store your library and you can search it when you're out and about purchasing a book to make sure you're not buying the same book if you're a collector. Unfortunately, there's no way to share the free version of that. I've often considered going to the paid version because my daughter uses it as well for her home and classroom library. And so it would be nice to know what she has. But usually I'll just send her a picture of the book and she can look it up quick. Uh, because, you know, we don't use it every month, so don't really want to pay for your subscription if we don't have to. I think this is really cute. I'm always enamored by farm animals, as most of you know. <laughs> then I have the everything I needed to know about life I learned from a little golden book. I didn't have this one, and it, it, the thrift store had it, and it's got all the favorite characters and stories they just took excerpts from all the different little golden books that had to do with love and put them all into one book which is kind of cute and it's this one is written for adults as well as the everything i needed to know about life book then i found these little cuties let's see it's illustrated by Ruth J. Moorhead, and I remember her illustrations being used a lot in the current stationery. And while it's a really adorable book from 1985, I thought because it's a little dog-eared because of this section that flips, and it kind of gets a little more raggedy as we go see how they're folded I thought it might be fun to just go ahead and in fact, yeah this is the one kind of stuck I thought it might be fun to go ahead and just cut them out and then the pages are all double so then I don't have to pick between this character or this character and because it's a cardboard or card stock, it would make great little tucks or pockets. And I just think they're so cute. And they really remind me of reading to my nieces and nephews in the 80s. Anyway, so cute. Couldn't pass that one up, but it's likely going to get cut up. Then I got the Clues for Real Life. This is kind of another compilation book. But it's Wit and Wisdom from Nancy Drew. And it's just full of her book artwork from over the years. So it talks about 1930 and 1959. It talks about how she changed with the revisions. She started out as a plucky, brash, and opinionated young lady in the 1930s original and then in 59 she became an 
unfailingly polite debutante type who's always dutiful. <laughs> the books got less violent. <laughs> This would be super fun for doing a Nancy Drew journal. Oh, puppy, you're okay. All the illustrations, notes about her fashion. <laughs> I just could not pass this up. Uh, one of my daughters was a big mystery reader fan when she was growing up. Next, I got another paint sample card there. Just sitting there in the hardware section. So don't neglect going to your hardware section because you never know where things are going to be placed that you might be able to use. I really enjoyed the other one I had, and I used a lot of it, and so I'm glad to have another one. I'm going to move these aside and grab a few more things. Next, I got another index card file. Oops, I had it the right way. This one has the months of the year, and then days 1 to 30. And... I have number and letter cards, but I don't have any with the months on them, so that's kind of fun. In fact, I might leave these out and think about adding them to my date book that I'm making uh, that was inspired by Hazel and Aka. Then I got the Teddy Bear ABCs. This is a reproduction, let's see, it said, a 1982 copy that was originally published in 1907. I was a huge teddy bear fan in the 80s, and I don't know, it's kind of growing on me because I have gotten a lot of teddy bear books over the last probably six months that maybe now I might consider doing a teddy bear journal if only I could find the time <laughs> I have three projects in the works so I don't really need to start another one but the books are there if I decide to do it okay that one and then I got this footprints book. I feel like I need to pull you up just a little because the books are getting bigger. This is a reader and it is from 1976. And so it has different stories with different illustrators. The dog whining noises are free to the viewer looking at the puppy dogs in the book. One-way tickets is about going to the zoo, I believe. They're just cute little illustrations. Painting the doghouse. Dinosaurs in the park. Oh, and they end up being a band, not an actual dinosaur. But then here's some dinosaurs in the back of the book. Fun, fun. I love these how and why books. I have fussy cut a number of them uh, from fish to insects. I would love to find a mushroom one. <laughs> this is the tree version. They have these really nice pretty heavy pages and the patina on them is usually great for some reason they they age quite nicely that way they have beautiful illustrations and usually they are very tag or fussy cut worthy 
Like, look at these. The color is amazing. So I'm pretty excited to find that. And then I also fussy cut the covers because they have this inside. And these make the cutest little tags or tuck spots. Oh, and look, there's a giraffe. Meg! Then I've gotten these before, and I've showed you some before, but I love Peanuts and Charlie Brown and Snoopy, and I look for these cyclopedias. <laughs> love how it's apostrophe. Uh, and mainly because... This one's got some scribbles in it. These are so fun to fussy cut. And seeing the characters, not in a story, but just amongst the encyclopedia knowledge. And they're just so much fun to pull out of here and use in journals. The peanuts span quite a few decades and oh my gosh there's more giraffes Meg yeah the the, the peanuts span a few decades and so they're really fun for memory journals because a lot of people remember them being a part of their childhood Yeah, I really love these little ones. These have kind of heavier matte pages, which is really nice, too. I think I could fussy cut in my on my side of the sofa <laughs> for the next 20 years and not be done with things that I would love to fussy cut. So... I am storing more books complete and not just cutting them all up and then just pulling them when I need something which is working out well for me. I do have quite a bit that's already stored, sorted, and it's, it is super convenient to just go to the box. I have the little photo boxes in drawers by subject and I have file folders with things by subject and date. And it is super convenient to go to the things I had already pulled apart, cut apart, and reach in, grab what I need, and go on with my project. But they're getting quite full, and so it's nice. I really appreciate Angela uh, inviting me to sell with her because uh, I clearly need to sh keep sharing with all of you. And also, as I'm moving towards retirement with this, making this a little business, Angela's been so supportive of mentoring through that. And I hope that you all are taking advantage of the opportunity to list in the district with her for her Maker's Marketplace. So again, I will link in the description box below if you're interested in being a seller on that platform, there is a video, Q&A video on her channel where she and I gave you a lot of information and then we're doing onboarding as sellers apply. I hope you'll check that out. It's a really fun opportunity to work together. Uh, last but not least here, I have a Walter Foster published art book. This one is by... Lola Aids or Addis. I don't know how you say that. The pictures are incredibly beautiful. The pages are matte. These are huge pictures, probably 13 and a half inches by 10 and a quarter. I know, bud. You're doing okay. Come here, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're absolutely adorable and I think they would make great journal pages and these little flowers could be fussy cut or made into a pocket like this the progression of painting the flower wouldn't that be cool these art books are always fun and sometimes they're very pricey so I'm so happy our thrift store is back and reasonable. Let's 
It's got some kind of paint on it. Uh, looks like oils. The way the oil has seeped from where the paint... Oh, I'm not even on camera for that. Yeah, it's oil paint, and then the oil has seeped out through the paper, but the paint is just here. It's well away from the pictures, though, which is nice. And these are just a sampling of a bunch of the books that he has published. Well, this was a fun little haul today. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for liking this video. If you love thrifty hauls or thrifted treasures. And thank you to my new subscribers and to my loyal longtime watchers. I appreciate you all sincerely. And I hope you're heading into another great weekend and that you're not suffering too much from the change in the time. <laughs> For those of you who live where daylight savings time rotation has not ended. <laughs> Take care and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.